Hi, I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. Those of us who are independent and live alone shouldn't do so without having emergency protection. And for reliability and peace of mind, I recommend the Alert USA emergency response system. With Alert USA, simply wear our pendant in and around your home. And if you ever fall or otherwise need assistance, just press the button to be connected to a specially trained operator who can summon help anytime, day or night. I believe that in these tough times, Alert USA provides the best emergency support and value for your dollar. Right now, for a limited time, get the Alert USA system for just 50 cents a day. You'll also get our free 911 emergency cell phone that'll protect you when you're away from home or in a blackout. A phone so advanced, it can even take your blood pressure. Plus, we'll include a free smoke detector with 24-hour monitoring. Only Alert USA protects you and your home no matter where you are. For a free Alert USA brochure, call now at 1-800-839-3023. That's 1-800-839-3023. A very wealthy U.S. citizen is predicting that in 2011, we will witness the most important day in America in more than 50 years. He says it will change everything about our lives. The way you shop, travel, invest educate your children, and even how you take care of your health and your own family. Now, this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years, but here's the thing. He's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, in fact, Barron's, called his work a dire prophecy. Recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet. And it's a real eye-opener. I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can watch it for free right now. Go to 47newamerica.com. Again, that's 47newamerica.com. Welcome back to Good Morning Pahrump. I'm your host, Jenny Manning, and we're with Allison. And before the break, we promised that we would talk about some of the other U.S. fish and wildlife uh, refugees that were here in Nevada. And probably the closest one to, to Vegas is the desert. Can, can you tell us just a little bit about that? Um, yeah, Desert National Wildlife Refuge, it's actually the largest uh, wildlife refuge in the lower 48 states. It's it's huge. I can't remember exactly how many acres it encompasses, but over, oh, a, yeah. mil over a million acres. Yeah. It's just massive. Um, and you get to it um, right off of 95. There's a sign for Corn Creek. A lot of people uh -huh. know it as Corn Creek. Um, right now, there um, there's a lot of construction going on that people might have heard about because they're building a new visitor center and facilities there. So right now, it, um, it's it's a bit of a mess, <laughs> to so be honest. Summer might be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in a little while, you know, into the fall, um, it, it kind of has to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, yeah. But that's just the visitor center area. The, uh -huh. um, but, the you know, there's still a lot more of the refuge beyond that. Um, but you need to have a really um, dependable, high-clearance, sturdy vehicle to access and, a lot of the refuge because the roads are not Two tires. Paved. Two spare tires. <laughs> yes, yes, because, um, yeah, the roads are, it's very remote, rugged terrain, um, uh -huh. but definitely um, worthwhile to those who see are adventurous and, and can make it out there. Um, there it is. There's some really beautiful places to hike um, and camp uh -huh. out in the backcountry there, and you really get the, the true backcountry experience at desert. What would you recommend to somebody who's going out to hike? What, what, what supplies would you think that they should bring with them? Um, honestly, I think the best thing to do is to um, contact the visitor center and um, the rangers there, or the refuge manager, before you go, because it depends on the conditions of that day, and you want to get up to date weather conditions and yeah. uh, and that type of information. And the so there can isn't, change. And it can change, exactly. Yeah. So I can't really say, you know, what the best advice would be right now <laughs> other than just check in before check you in. go and be prepared. Always be prepared. Yes. Don't, so don't just go sure. out empty handed and hope for the best because that's when yeah, GF <laughs> accidents GPS happen, is so. don't always work out no, there. You can't rely on that. 
Definitely yeah, not. and like I, I'm not joking when I say two spare tires. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. it does happen, and, and you don't want to get stuck out there in the desert. It was, this time of year is not so bad. You're just going to walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in the summertime, it can be bad. But, it, you know, and it's, high, it's higher elevation because you're going up over a pass into the mountains. So yeah. even at this time of year, you know, you can get snow and you can oh, really? get really cold temperatures. Um, so that's yeah. why I say check in. <laughs> check in, <laughs> and, yeah. And make sure that you know what you're getting into. And at least let them know that you're out and, there. Yep, always let people know before mm -hmm. you go where you're headed. Yep. Then we got the mall. Moapa Valley. Moapa Valley. Yep. The That's the um, the newest refuge. It's um, and it's also the smallest in the area. Yeah. Um, but um, it does have a, a new um, trail system uh -huh. um, with some information, and they're protecting the Moapa dace. Um, that that's a fish species there that's only found there mm -hmm. and um, you can actually see along the trail oh, they have a really nice viewing um, viewing window that you can actually see into the stream and oh, see the cool. fish going by it's it's really neat so it almost looks like a puff fish Just yeah they're uh, the dace are a little bit they're longer uh -huh. um, and they have some different characteristics I'm not a fish expert myself yeah. <laughs> Um, to go into yeah. all those details, but they are, they're distinct species because uh -huh. pupfish are killifish, whereas the dace are, are um, you know, in a separate group. Okay. So. <laughs> and last but not least, the one where you can go and fishing. Paranagat, mm. yes. Paranagat is, um, if you take Highway 93 north uh -huh. um, for about an hour and a half, and um, it goes, it stretches right along the highway, but there's um, a lot of really beautiful lakes and springs, um, camping, mm -hmm. and a lot of bird watchers go to Paranagat because there's so much water and um, great habitat. There's a lot of interesting migratory birds that come through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I so. think I've been, I've been there. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yep. Just in my travels, just all the different wildlife. You have eagles up there too. Mm -hmm. Looks like eagles. Yeah, we have the uh -huh. golden eagles, occasionally bald eagles. Uh huh. Um, so. Wow. Yeah, and then of course a lot of mammals, coyotes and mm -hmm. things like that. So. Coyotes, yeah, yeah. That's a big elk too, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah. So this is one that you could actually stay overnight. Right. Yeah. At Ash Meadows, um, there aren't any, there's no camping or facility, so it would be more of a day trip. Uh -huh. But at um, Paranagat and Desert National Wildlife Refuge, there is camping allowed at, uh -huh. um, on you know, designated areas. Uh -huh. so. Yeah. So you can, you can. Um, is, there any sur is there any charge for that? Um, nope. I don't believe, I don't believe so. Might need to check in. Yeah, on that one. <laughs> but yeah, it was but. what a great what a great place you know to spend your weekend. I've I've been I've been there. You know we have lots of good restaurants here. You can pick up your food in Pahrump, and mm -hmm. it'll still be relatively hot when you get into Ash Meadows. Yep. It's it's uh, you, you hear the miles, but it's not bad because you're not stopping it. It's not like a, a Las Vegas mile. It's a country mile. Exactly. <laughs> you can just go straight and not have any traffic to worry about. Yeah, no, no traffic, no stoplights. It's mm -hmm. a country mile, and, and, and mm -hmm. it's way different than the city miles. It's not mm -hmm. bad. Once you get out of Las Vegas, it's, it's just a, pretty much a straight shot, mm -hmm. and it's easy to mm -hmm. find. And a lot of people, like, there's, there's some really interesting things in the – the surrounding communities, um, so mm -hmm. you can make a nice day trip of it. I always like to tell people to stop by Shoshone and Tacopa, um, uh -huh. which is you know near Death Valley, and Death Valley is really close by as well. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of really interesting places that you can explore, um, and then also Ash Meadows, mm -hmm. if it, you wanted to do it for you know even a, a weekend trip. Yeah, and it's just right there, you know, mm -hmm. right right in our own backyard. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a great place to come come out, but but desert is the closer one. But but like I said, the just the trails alone, it's a, a safe yeah. place where you can take your kids. Mm -hmm. I know our sales guy Dan says he likes to take his kids there because the boardwalks, there's no escapee. <laughs> <laughs> He's got little boys, <laughs> you know. So because of the railing, 
on the boardwalk, you can just let them go and run. Right. And then they can't get lost because it's a loop. And yeah. They, there's, you know, <laughs> or at, like at, by our visitor center, the Crystal Spring boardwalk, it goes out to Crystal Spring and then comes right back. So they really, there's nowhere to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's a really yeah. beautiful one that I would recommend. It's that spring. It's, um, it's the largest flowing spring. So it's not necessarily the largest in area, uh -huh. but it puts out over 2,600 gallons of water every minute. Wow. So that's actually, you know, think about it. That's a lot yeah, of water. Yeah, it is a lot. <laughs> um, and the springs, um, you know, people don't expect it. They, that's one of the things that people always comment about is just how beautiful blue the water is. Because uh -huh. it looks very tropical, but it's out yeah. in the middle of this, of this yeah. really <laughs> dry desert. It, so. it is. It is truly an oasis. It, mm -hmm. And I, under, I understand that the Native Americans used to live in that area. So there's there's a little bit of history there too. Yeah, a lot, and they and you know, the Paiute and the Shoshone still live in this area, um, uh -huh. and um, and come to the refuge and consider consider all of this this area to be very special. It is. It yes. is. Well, here's here's a picture of the boardwalk. If you can see that, I mean, it's it's really nice out there. It's worth mm -hmm. it's worth coming out and spending the day. And uh, there's another picture, but yeah, the board the boardwalk is is so nice, and I understand. Like I said, when I was there, it was it was nice, but I, but but you have to come if you haven't been there in a couple of years because there's changes, right? And mm -hmm. a bigger yeah, we've been doing a lot of um, uh, habitat restoration as well, uh -huh. um, which is something that you might not notice or realize at first, but some of the folks that have been in the area for um, generations know that it looks different than how they remember from when they were kids. Yeah. Um, and that's because, um, you know, there, was, there used to be, before the refuge was established in 1984, it was, um, it was being developed um, for housing. There was plans for housing to yeah. go in. And also it was under large scale farming um, uh -huh. and ranching. Wow. And so a lot of the water had been diverted into cement channels and irrigation. There's a mm -hmm. whole irrigation network. If you look at the maps, it was yeah. just all like crisscross. It looked <laughs> like it was starting to look like a little mini Vegas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just because of the channels um, and where the water is being redirected. But we've, um, in a lot of areas on the refuge, we've torn out those channels and mm -hmm. re actually gone in and dug um, natural streams. And we actually we have a lot of volunteers from the community that come out from Vegas and Pahrump mm -hmm. and help us um, with that work with replanting native plants oh, that's and nice. um, cutting cattails from the streams because they tend to overgrow and uh -huh. crowd out the the fish. And so um, so on a lot of Saturdays we have what we call stewardship Saturdays uh -huh. when people can come out and help us with those projects. And if somebody so. was interested in doing that, how would they get a hold of you? Um, they can uh, just call us and uh -huh. ask about it. Um, there's also a website um, called getoutdoorsnevada.org uh -huh. where um, volunteer events are posted, um, not just for Ash Meadows, but for in this whole area. You oh. can find about, about ways to volunteer. Well, that's nice. On public lands, yeah. So there's a there's actually a lot of that going on and it's it's growing. The what community. what's the website again? It's www.getoutdoorsnevada. Uh huh. All written out. Yeah. Dot org. O r g. Well, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I just see here. I, I didn't know about this uh, cabin. I guess it just got restored. The Long Street. The Long Street. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Long Street. That's, that is cool. If I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but but they restored the cat. The cabin of the original settler. I had no idea that. Yeah, it's really. You can actually go into the cabin and oh, see. Oh, you can. Yeah, it's really neat. Uh -huh. That's our shortest boardwalk. Um, it's only what maybe 0.2 miles. Mm -hmm. Not even that. Maybe 0.1 mile. Um, but it leads up to the Long Street Spring, and that's where mm -hmm. Jack Long Street was one of the earlier settlers. He lived at Ash Meadows for just a few years in the. Um, really early 1900s mm -hmm. and um, that cabin he built was actually a food storage cabin and nice. the spring um, would have flowed actually through maybe a bit of a trickle going through the cabin but it kept oh. the, it kept it cool oh that's so neat. it was like a natural <laughs> refrigeration yeah yeah that's how they had to do it back in the day when there wasn't electricity yeah <laughs> so 
Um, but he lived in a cabin further back behind that one, behind where the boardwalk is. Yeah, I'll have to go that out. I haven't seen that. That's, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's a great way to get exercise, too, <laughs> without thinking that you're getting exercise. Right. <laughs> okay, one more time, that website. Um, www.getoutdoorsnevada.org. Well, well, it's time to go already. Well, oh, wow. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for coming. It's you're been welcome. a great, great thank educational you for having experience. Me. Thank you.